Hi, my name is Phil Wolf, and I'm a herper. Over the past decade, I've mentored countless individuals in the safe handling of venomous reptiles in captivity. These are my venomous etiquette videos. I hope you enjoy. Handling venomous reptiles in captivity can be extremely dangerous. Due to their unpredictability and oftentimes volatile nature, keepers and handlers should have a wide array of tools and equipment to aid in accomplishing the task at hand and to limit direct contact with the actual animal, ultimately keeping everyone safe, both the human and the animal. In this episode, we will cover an assortment of tools commonly used when handling venomous reptiles properly. Some of these would include snake hooks, snake tongs, and hemostats for feeding. We hope you enjoy. An appropriate array of maintenance tools is key to the arsenal of the venomous keeper. Having a wide assortment of maintenance tools makes regular maintenance easier when we can't simply use our hands. A venomous keeper should never allow their hands to cross the threshold into an animal's enclosure, regardless of the species at hand or how fast we may think we actually are. Arguably the most popular, the hemostat, come in varying lengths and styles depending on the species they are being used with as well as the preference of the keeper. Always go longer than you think. The farther away you are, the safer you will be. Some hemostats are straight and some are curved. It's a good idea to have a little bit of both to cater to the tasks at hand. Some hemostats have locking jaws at the handle end. This is great for grabbing water bowls and debris but can be cumbersome when feeding. Oftentimes I prefer to put the jaws back to back so they are less prone to lock, giving me more mobility and ease of escape. There is a right and wrong way to hold hemostats. That being said, do what works best for you. The standard technique for holding hemostats, regardless of the dominant hand, is to place the middle finger through the bottom loop. The index finger is then wrapped around the front of the bottom loop where the loop meets the pincer. The thumb is then inserted on the top loop, giving the user the most mobility and a more tactile approach. Squeezing with the base of the palm, I can control the scissored teeth on the back end of the hemostat. When using hemostats, especially with sliding glass enclosures, it is ideal to keep the lowest profile possible. This will help when extracting the hemostats from the enclosure, as well as limiting a window of escape. Notice here I slide the glass open with the back end of a hook. I insert the hemostats in a vertical manner, going parallel with the pane of glass. Obviously these hemostats are too short to do anything productive, but this is just a demo. I can then slide the hemostats out and close the glass tightly, not allowing any escapes. Let's examine the alligator forceps. This tool is rarely used in feeding anything that is not a neonate. They are short and dangerous. This tool is strictly used for feeding very small snakes and medical use on an already restrained animal. With regards to feeding, a keeper can have a more refined hold on a prey item 
that would normally be too small to grab appropriately with larger tools. And although I'm not very good at it, you can see I easily picked up this Gaboon Viper fang that's approximately an inch and a half long. Having a spare neonate hook can also be a valuable maintenance tool. Obviously, its use is restricted to very small baby snakes, but it can also be used to manipulate decor as well as be used as a small shepherd's crook to direct a snake or a lizard in a desired path. Here you can see me move the sand with the neonate hook and I just gently touch the snake so that I can examine underneath it and make sure he's not sitting on any soiled sand. An archaic tool seldomly seen by the modern keeper is a plunger hook. The plunger hook resembles the spring-loaded syringes of yesteryear. Inside the shaft of the hook is a wire attached to a spring-loaded plunger. At the tip of the tool is a small hook, just big enough for a rat's tail. The idea behind this is that the tail of the rat is placed in the hook and the smallest amount of cage can be opened. This tool is cumbersome and annoying. Nevertheless, it's a cool piece of herper history. I figured I'd share. Before any maintenance with Captive Venomous, routine or other, the keeper should first assess the scenario. What am I doing? How am I doing it? And do I have the right tools to perform the task safely? The next step is locating the animal. Oftentimes, snakes are hiding or blending with camouflage in plain sight. In this case, we are using a Sterilite gasket tub with four latches. Because the saw scale viper is at the bottom of the tub, I can use my hands to undo the latches. If the snake was resting at the top of the tub, I would use a tool to undo the latches instead and use a hook to remove the lid. Never use your hands if you don't have to. The goal is to keep your distance. Now that I've removed the lid, I can use the hemostats to remove the water bowl and any waste I may see. It's always a great idea to have a hook at the ready or on standby in case things don't go as planned. In this case, I have my green Venom Life Gear Neonate hook right at the ready. The one tool essential to a venomous keeper is the snake hook. Regardless of your level of experience, every venomous keeper should have a minimum of two snake hooks, a primary and a backup, but you can never have too many. There are copious amounts of keepers using primitive hooks, broom handles and wire hangers, but for handling venomous, a keeper should have professionally made hooks. There are several manufacturers out there offering fantastic products at affordable prices, but remember, the hook is only as good as the handler using it. The snake hook needs to be an extension of yourself, the link between you and your animal. It takes time to master the manipulation of the snake hook, and in future episodes, we will cover the proper techniques to do so. But for now, let's examine the most common and popular types of snake hooks available. Regardless of manufacturer, the most common type of snake hook is the standard hook. 
These hooks are typically 30 or 40 inches in shaft length with a wide U-shaped hook at the head and a golf club putter's grip as a handle. These hooks are well suited for beginners and experts. They offer the versatility to handle a wide assortment of species as well as an appropriate length to keep the handler out of harm's way. A question often asked is what length of hook should I buy? Choosing a length comes down to the individual keeper. Some handlers who are shorter may want a shorter hook so they can easily reach stuff on the ground. Other keepers may prefer a longer hook to keep their distance further away from the specimen, especially if that specimen is defensive. Feel free to take tips and advice from other handlers. However, when it comes down to brass tacks, you're the one handling the animal. You've got to be comfortable. One of my favorite hooks is the Midwest Tongs Professional Snake Hook. This hook is masterfully constructed out of aircraft grade aluminum with an indomitable titanium U-shaped hook. It features a grip in the middle of the shaft for use with two hands and at 45 inches long, it has saved my skin more times than I'd like to admit. That being said, it is very large for indoor use and the foam grip in the middle of the shaft can be quite dangerous if a snake were to slither up the shaft and grab onto the texture of the grip. A must have for any field herper is the L-shaped field hook. This hook can be rather cumbersome for use in captive husbandry, but its versatility in the field is like no other. The shaft and handle are typically constructed of aircraft grade aluminum or stainless steel, and the L-shaped hook is made of hardened stainless steel and chemically bonded in place. Small notches are cut at the tip of the hook for better gripping of rotten stumps, fallen logs, and debris. The sole purpose of this hook is to move obstacles in the field and still be able to handle a snake if need be. Shifting gears, here we have the opposite end of the spectrum, the Neo hook or Neonate hook. These hooks are small, thin, light, and short. Typically made of aircraft grade aluminum, these hooks are incredibly light with a thin, narrow head for balancing tiny Neonate snakes. The red one is produced by Midwest Tongs. I've had this one over a decade. And the green one is from Venom Life Gear. Venom Life Gear offers their neonate hooks in a wide assortment of colors. We'll also notice that we have an old school stainless steel baby hook. This dark coloration on the head is where there was once rubber coating it to protect the snake from the harshness of the raw metal. Very crude, but works well in a jiffy. If size is a factor when traveling, there are several hooks catered to the globetrotting herper. Here we have the Venom Life Gear Travel Series hook. This hook is made to all of Venom Life Gear's top tolerances and craftsmanship, only thinner, lighter, and shorter. Designed to fit in any suitcase, this hook was tailor-made for students of the University of Central Florida to do field work in South America. A remarkable tool I can't speak highly enough about is the Venom Life Gear Rack Tool, or as I like to call it, the Drawer Puller. This tool is 32 inches long and utilizes the same grip as the Travel Series rubber grip. The sole purpose of this tool is to slide open rack drawers safely from a distance. The tool can also be used to direct snakes by gently touching them as well as being an emergency second hook. A keeper should never open a drawer or rack with their bare hands. Always use a snake hook or drawer pulling instrument for safe reasons. Notice how this rattlesnake is very quick to come right out of the drawer. I just give him a gentle poke and he slides back in. He's safe and so am I. A question I'm asked frequently is how do I feel about collapsible snake hooks? Personally, I see the reasoning for them, as well as their versatility, but in my personal opinion, some of the pros don't outweigh the cons. Collapsible snake hooks can be more dangerous than they are helpful. Most of them are made overseas with cheap materials, which can cause fatal accidents. Most collapsible snake hooks will rotate within the shaft, as well as have too much flex, causing the hook to bend and eventually snap. It's very common for a handler to know the limitations of the collapsible hook, but underestimate the weight of the snake they're trying to use it with. It's a very scary feeling when one of your hooks snaps in front of you with a snake actually on it. 
Here we can see a collapsible hook having flex. Too much flex and the hook's gonna snap. This hook is now completely useless and should never be used more than this demo. Always remember to test your products before use. It could mean life or death in this type of scenario. The granddaddy of all snake handling equipment are the Pilstrom tongs. The Pilstrom tongs were invented by Dr. Lawrence G. Pilstrom in 1954. Dr. Pilstrom needed an implement for safely catching venomous snakes for his doctoral work at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. Pilstrom tongs are extremely crude and could be downright dangerous, but they're used the world over to safely remove and relocate dangerous animals. Despite being made of stainless steel, lots of the moving parts are exposed to the elements. Here we can see how the jaws interlock, which gives a perfect grip on the snake, but if squeezed too hard, could severely injure or even kill an animal. When using Pilstrom tongs in the field, it's important to constantly check your springs and cables, making sure that nothing is gonna rust or become frail and snap. On the opposite end of the tongs, we find the handle and trigger curved into a proper pistol grip, allowing for the trigger to be squeezed with all four fingers. Evolving into the 21st century, Midwest Tongs has produced the Pro Series of Tongs. These tongs feature all captive hardware riveted in place with a poly-coated top jaw for safe grabbing of the snake. Midwest Tongs offers their Pro Series in a wide assortment of lengths and sizes. Midwest Tongs flagship tong, the Gentle Giants, feature a very robust body with wide grabbing jaws. The pressure put onto the snake's body is equally distributed across these wide jaws, eliminating any potential injury to the snake. For those inexperienced with handling venomous reptiles, this option may be the safest. Our good friends at Rattlesnake Solutions in Arizona were kind enough to let us use this video. Here we see Marissa scooping up a Western Dimeback rattlesnake in someone's pool area. The gentle giants are used easily and the snake is unharmed. Here we can see the gentle giants up close. The pistol grip has a back strap for the back of the thumb and finger grooves for your fingers. And although it is very heavy and intended to be used with two hands, it's still managed with one hand. Weighing in at only 20 ounces, Midwest Tongs has produced their M1 series of tongs. These tongs are for use with lean snakes in tight spaces such as high-speed elapids. These are my personal preferred tongs and have traveled with me well. Here we can see how much lighter they are and how easy it is to use with one hand. Being thinner allows for more tight nooks and crannies, especially when field herping. Just because you have the ability to grab an animal doesn't mean you have to. Here you can see me cradling a Western Dimeback rattlesnake without squeezing it at all. A classic example of just because you can doesn't always mean you should. There are many more tools and equipment we have not yet covered. Some more advanced, some more obscure. That being said, stay tuned for future episodes with more safe handling venomous etiquette and equipment.